Okay. <clears throat> so now that I'm back, I'm going to activate that. I'm going to actually activate this because Sunshine Tidings is over here and then it's a downward shot to um, I guess it's more convenient to go from here to here to here but yeah actually in that case I won't do Tidings go up um, I'll do that one. So the mutated fern is apparently in Forest Grove Marsh. Okay, dog mate, you go and do your thing, and I'll go and find some stuff for some dudes. Oh yeah, I should probably... So I mentioned a while ago back in Vault 114 about um, I think dog meat might actually spawn some death claws up ahead. I'll need to see if he does though. Nothing yet. Yep, I'll be back to you soon. My only hope is that by um not continuing Dogmeat's quest, I'll um, avoid those spawns up ahead. Absolutely take some hub flower though. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, going to new wet dog meat is seems to make things foggy. The brackets are shifting, so that's probably the Milox over that way. Um, Oh, 
Oh, there's a few more of these. Okay, well, better save it here just in case. Um, oh, more. Sweet. Nothing useful there apart from a bit of wood. So yeah, um, no weapons, no armor would be, it would definitely be a challenge in itself. Like, there is definitely no doubt about that. Like you're basically doing minimum damage. Oh, there we go. Oh, do I want to do that thing first before going across the water? I probably do. Can make some psycho jet. So yeah, probably want to go into here first. There's that. Then it occurred to me that at least in the difficulty is very hard or lower, you could probably get across the glowing sea, which is something you need to do to complete the game. There's no way, there's no real way out of doing that. What's this? That's unstoppables. Okay. I think I have two of those. Okay. I Actually, I think there was stuff over there. Let's see. How much damage would I do? Not much. There's some eggs over there. But in here is a stew pot and some soap. But yeah, that's a soft shell, and I think the other one is a kill claw or a razor claw. But it's right under me. So I can't actually tell. Quick save. Right, there we go. And I'm just going to run away. But they do chase me for quite a while. Have I escaped them? Yep. Uh, yeah, I probably want to go up this way next. <clears throat> yep, 
Yeah, for that bridge. Is this death? Nope. Okay. Raiders, how many? Wait, what? Oh, that's a dog. Come on, you can do it. to do some more attacks. <laughs> and there we go. Oh. Okay. Some more whiskey. Okay. I don't think I can survive that jump. I, um... Let's see, though. <laughs> Wow, that's physics. Ah. And yeah, I don't think you can have resistance to fall damage by having damage resist. Okay, well I guess I need to run back down. Oh, that's fine. That's a okay. <clears throat> but yeah, you're not actually that likely to take fall damage. Like, you're relatively likely to have a death from falling. Okay, now get up. There we go. Come on. Okay. Now there's other areas nearby where you could pick up a mutated fern. Oh, advanced safe. Uh -huh. But I guess it's somewhat convenient to be able to... Um, there we go. To be able to... Okay, what's this? Physics wins again. Um, <clears throat> but yeah. So... If you were to complete the game where where you were basically only allowed to have stuff in these two tabs uh, miscellaneous and junk because you need miscellaneous stuff um, to say um, get into Kellogg's house 
right? You either need to have Kellogg's house key or you need to have master lock pick and at least one bobby pin to get in. So you definitely need to have miscellaneous. Um, <clears throat> so you could probably do enough damage to Kellogg such that you could kill him with well naked and fist only. <clears throat> um, and you might even be able to do it without taking enough damage to require any of this. Possibly. Like, you, you, you'd think that the hardest part would be going without stuff like steam packs or other healing items. But, as it turns out, when the weirdest did his no hard no pit boy playthrough, uh, the hardest part of basically, oh, well, there's that. I still want to get the location to proc though, because I know roughly where I'm going, and if I head straight to Fort Hagen and then wait, the dog will spontaneously catch up. So yeah, let's get the thing to proc. There's feral ghoul over there. There's probably going to be one over here. No? Okay. There's some oil. I'm going to, I guess, look through here for stuff. A spine for no reason. Um, is that a door? Somebody rigged the door and just hit that. Okay. Somebody was a weirdo. There's a lot of silver though. <clears throat> but yeah, the hardest part is crossing the glowing sea. Now, if you have your HUD and you can see where you're supposed to be going to then you could run straight all the way to Virgil's cave in fact that's how it's done in a speedrun Um, and yeah, the proc is down here. <clears throat> so the reason why I say that it's harder in survival mode, yeah, here we go. Now that I've got that to proc, I can go back and offload some things. And then also turn those quests in. So yeah, the reason why it's harder in survival mode is that <clears throat> you can't fast travel. Which normally you can deal with, but in the glowing sea, if you can't fast travel, that means you have to not only run to Virgil's cave, 
but you have to run back. Are you thinking I need to drop off? May as well drop off the booze. Uh, that too. in here. Yeah, everything here I need elsewhere. And I can't, I still can't make any cutting fluid. Alright then. <coughs> oh, there was, oh. So yeah, um, so one problem, good for you, uh, yeah I've already dropped everything off, I guess I could also drop off the beer, okay. sort of challenge would probably in survival mode it'd be the sort of thing where having a DLC would probably be necessary uh, in order to be able to get back you would need to yeah I should wait Six, seven, eight. <clears throat> so one of the DLCs gives let's yeah, it's um red resistant. Right, so with red resistance, you can get up to plus 30. When the weirdest did his no hard, no pep boy thing across the glowing sea, I think he had plus 50 because one of the DLCs gives a fourth rank to this. And He, he also had access to his vault suit. Um. <clears throat> hey, thanks for the host, Shadow Chaser. Hey, Hannah. How's things going? I was just talking about the sheer, about how a person would go with uh, uh, throughout this game without having any items in the weapons tab, apparel tab, or A tab, um, and going how, through how they would cross the glowing sea. Um, so yeah, it seems like ghoulish only. <laughs> same old, same old. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, 
Is that because of work or just general insomnia? But yeah, it seems like this ghoulish is just radiation regenerates lost health, radiation re regenerates more lost health, radiation now regenerates even more lost health. Uh, I think eventually you get a rank 4 that causes radiation to go away, I think. So you would need Oh, well, yeah, I can imagine that being exhausting. But yeah, one thing that you could do, or one thing that a person could do to mitigate that, mitigate the radiation of the glowing sea is solar powered too uh, and that, that wouldn't help in the glowing sea so sunlight slowly heals radiation damage would um, <clears throat> oh yeah being home is definitely after being away for a while it can definitely be a good thing to be back um, So yeah, to cross the going sea you'd need ghoulish to mitigate damage and solar power would make sunlight heal radiation damage. <clears throat> so it's a matter of having this cause you to take radiation damage slow enough so that you can... Um, oh sweet! What do you get? Um, but yeah, solar powered would also reduce the rate. Not sure if it would cause you to reduce it completely. Um, Strength. The strength tree would probably be useless in no items. Uh, oh, wind chime. Sweet. <coughs> so yeah, the only thing out of the strength tree that would be needed with uh, no items playthrough would be Iron Fist, so you wouldn't need to put, put points into here. Um, you wouldn't need Perception, or maybe you would to use Dogsmith. Oh, sweet! Let's see. <clears throat> you probably want Hacker in a No Items playthrough. Probably. But then anything over here would be useless. Um, in Agility, you would probably want Sneak. Action girl or action boy would be necessary to help you get through the glowing sea faster. Um, you'd probably want moving target, especially moving target 3. That would be really, really good for crossing the glowing sea, but it would require you to have level 44. Um, and blitz. Potentially. As for luck,
You want bloody mess to do more damage. That would probably help. That would almost definitely help. In no items, it would probably be worth the sound that it makes. That would be useful, especially against Kellogg. So with that... Yeah, so basically the luck and endurance tree would be necessary. Uh, you could go without intelligence. Probably. Um, you could do... Oh, so you would need a agil uh, high agility as well. Because, oh, number of action points in that. Huh. As for the charisma tree, I guess Black Widow would be okay. Lone Wanderer. I wonder if that 15% less damage uh, includes red damage. I wonder. And local leader could be necessary. And uh, the reason <coughs> why Yes. Okay, thank you. Nah. Actually, I did have stuff to tell you. Uh... want to sell I think it was red yeah that one that <coughs> okay so my reasoning for want for wanting to do melee only um, basically because like when I did my first playthrough I almost never used melee. The only scenarios where I used melee were for cockroaches which in this game are called red roaches and for mylur catchlings basically anything that's down low and hard to hit with a gun yep There we go. And that's a bit more experience for me. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, my reasoning for wanting to do this challenge was basically in my first playthrough I never went that far into melee. So this game has a bunch of cool melee weapons 
And it just so happens that if you combine melee with the blitz perk, which increases the range at which you can melee attack people, and you combine that with ninja, which increases the sneak attack bonus. Um, where about someone wanting to get to? Uh, I think it's about there. Okay. <clears throat> so you combine it with ninja. Um, You've got this perk, which makes you disarm your opponent sometimes, but it's... These perks say increased chance to... Um, to disarm your opponent, but it's actually a pretty big chance, especially when you're repeatedly wailing on an enemy. Um, and then Blacksmith allows me to add cool modifications to my weapons. So for example, this is an aluminium bat and it's got chains and nails on it. And so it does quite a bit of damage. I also have a sledgehammer, a serrated Chinese officer sword, a heavy pipe wrench and a serrated combat knife um, but I'm using the this thing because it does the most damage and it's non-hostile okay <clears throat> so yeah when you combine all of those factors um, <clears throat> a melee playthrough is probably one of the most powerful play. Th oh yeah, I'm getting close. It's one of the most powerful playthroughs you can come across. Um, uh, what's this? I'm going to quick save before doing that. Yeah, it's a baseball bat. <clears throat> oh, fuck. It's a good thing I ran away. So yeah, that plus sign there is an area with really dangerous bugs. And the bugs are quite dangerous in this game. Okay, so how close did I get? Pretty close. Okay. Let's run here before I get spotted by the thing. So yeah, right now dog meat isn't here. If I weave my way inside uh, what I can do is I can sleep for an hour and dog meat has teleported right here 
Oh, a lot of drugs. And a chem station. Buff jet and some psychic jet. Sweet. Uh, what else? Nothing. Okay. Uh, let's see. Sure. And that's it. Oh, not quite. There is a single surgery tray. I'll take that too. <coughs> so by waiting, um, dog meat teleports right here. Okay. And now I can be my companion again. Uh, okay, so now he's my companion. <coughs> so, yeah. Um, for this challenge, I have allowed companions so long as they are also using melee. But it, it did occur to me that it's possible that without me prompting them um, a humanoid companion may switch over to a gun like a um, default gun without me prompting them to. <clears throat> I wonder if I can take out those things though. Oh fuck. Okay. So that's one way to take out a turret. Yeah, but I probably don't want to um, <coughs> dick around with the turrets. Instead, what am I going to do? I guess what I could do is start going for um, Start going for various um, <clears throat> start going for various melee items. <laughs> because I don't feel like I'm quite capable of taking on Kellogg just yet. You'd want to scrap this and this and this and this. Okay. Did I have anything else to scrap? Peril. Yeah, I had radar leathers. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> 
So yeah, with there being um, the possibility, however slim, good for you. Um, I think try for Walden Pond first. No, I don't know exactly where it is. But I think it's nearby to ArcJet Systems. I think. Um. <coughs> oh yeah, I was supposed to sleep. Uh there happen to be a bed in here? No. Oh well, I've got plenty of aid so I'll have to find some stuff. Okay, and that should make my health heal up pretty good. Sweet. And there's a mile look. Better save over here now. Um. So yeah, by combining red resist with um, with solar powered, you would definitely be able to get across the going sea. At the very least, you'd be able to do it. Oh, damn it. Huh. That's an unusual shaped cooking station. Okay then. Oh, cherry. Oh, for fuck's sake. A friendly doggy. Oh, dog me. Okay. Oh, and you can. <laughs> Damn it. So yeah, in, in very hard it would be especially easy because you, you only need to travel to Virgil's cave. Um, in survival mode you would need to travel back. And I don't know if it would be possible uh, with while well, naked and with um, ten less red resist. Um, so dog meats, where'd you go? There you are. Parallel junk. So yeah, dog meat is kind of my pack mule.
Okay, and in return you can have this. There we go. Okay, I'm back here. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm not sure if there's any magazines or bobbleheads that would help with the radiation. Um, or any companion perks. Maybe Hancock's perk would be enough if it has anything to do with radiation because I'm not entirely certain what it is. before. And uh, no need to deal with that. Uh, I probably don't want to gear go near that. Maybe that there is Walden Pond. So, guess I'll go here and go north. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, my PC is also definitely not up to playing for that four. Uh, I wouldn't be able to play this game at all if I didn't have a PS4. So yeah, I think if I go north I might come across it. Otherwise I'll probably have to, between this playthrough and the next one, I'll have to um, I'll have to find out where it is and um, put it off uh, Put in a marker offline somewhere sometime. Oh, let's stay away from the sting wing. Yeah, I might be coming across it. Uh, Stingwing. So, some of the lore behind this game is basically in the year 2077 the nuclear apocalypse happens and basically everywhere is nuked. As a result of the radiation, a lot of animals mutate. And as they mutate, they get new names and new properties. 
So, for example, the common house fly becomes about the size of a dog and it shoots its maggots at people as an attack. Um, <clears throat> scorpions become red scorpions and they're about the size of a small car and do a huge amount of damage. Sting wings are, I think, based on I think they're based on scorpion flies. Yeah, yeah, I know. That is definitely gross. Uh, what's that? What the hell? Okay then. So yeah, I think the sting wings are based off of scorpion flies. Um, they do a huge amount of poison damage, which is especially bad because the only thing in the game that helps with poison damage is uh, Poisoner's Legendary Armor which gives plus 25 poison resistance okay that's a traitor yeah scorpion flies ex exist uh, and it looks like... Oh! I did find it, okay. <laughs> I was about to walk away then. You have reached your destination. Okay, well, I found it. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm not sure if scorpion flies uh, as dangerous as sting wings in this game or just um, as dangerous. Now this building is full of traps so I'm gonna quick save beforehand. There's one bomb. There's another bomb over here. I feel like there's a third bomb somewhere. I feel like there isn't just two. might just be the two. There we go. <clears throat> 
What's this? Master. Wait, is that another thing? Yep, that's a steel can. Okay. Okay, nothing in there. Some whiskey, which is nice. What's in this? That's a fishing rod. Okay. And I think it's just this. Oh, and a few trolleys down there. I guess a suit would be, I mean a striped suit would be um, good for a Iron Man playthrough. As in not Iron Man as in permadeath, but Iron Man as in literally Tony Stark. Um, but given the properties of an Iron Man play through it would probably be relatively easy especially considering that Iron Man um, <clears throat> if Iron Man went into the vaults and then he found himself woken up in the vaults and he had to get out and get into the world He would probably not have any problems <coughs> with using, say, regular armor or okay. So are you. And we're done. Uh, okay. Oh, here we go. Okay. Oh, there's a few cans as well. Uh, I don't need the pool cue because my other stuff is better. I think that's the way forward. That's just dog food. Okay. There we go. Okay, I need two can chimes. Oh. Doink! Oh yeah. Anything else? Doink! And we're done. Okay.
and this is what I came in for. Big Jim, 20% chance to cripple the target's leg. <clears throat> so it will be especially useful if Um, okay, oh, well, a master lock. Oh. Never mind. Sweet. Uh, let's take a broom. There's a few things over here. Coffee pot. So yeah, Big Jim is going to be useful if I'm in a situation where I need an enemy to stop you moving. <clears throat> so at some point, one thing that I will be doing in this playthrough uh, is you may have seen earlier, there was a giant green enemy with a giant um, with a giant club and that thing is called a behemoth it is the toughest type of super mutant in the game and it's time to return to base oh and the, <laughs> the bombs restored oh, I guess I missed one actually oh well But yeah, I will need to take on a um, a behemoth. <clears throat> and if I okay, so what I'm going to do it was the handicapper. So yeah, heavy is better for that. Okay. And then this I'll put on the heavy. And then I will scrap, scrap the handicapper. So yeah, let's call this the knee breaker. Ah, a 
go problem at Green Top Nursery. I guess I will want the pip though. <clears throat> I guess I also had Amazon scrap. Okay. So do is favorite I mean it is technically a medium weapon. I probably will want the knee breaker to be quick access, so I'll put knifey spoony over here. Let's do up some chems. That's going to be everything for today's stream. Uh, the VOD is going to be broken up a lot due to those de technical difficulties, but thanks everybody for watching and I will see you tomorrow.